Praise God. It's a victory day. It's a victory day, everybody. Thank you so much uh, for coming on. I know people are still coming in. Um, I am honored to be here. I am Dr. Chaz Gibson. I serve as the young adult minister here, and I am just honored for this opportunity. I want to thank our pastor, Dr. Jazz, for the opportunity, uh, the ministerial staff for praying with me and all of the VGC family. Uh, and yes, I know this is Young Adult Night, so I want to just take a moment to shout out all of the young adults. If you're in here, put in the chat, say, I'm here, throw your hand up. Just say, I am here, I am here, and uh, praise God. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, as we prepare for this night, as we prepare for the word, Father God, remove me, decrease me, and increase you. Let there be something said that will help somebody and give them exactly what they need. We love you, Lord. We honor you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Again, welcome to everyone. Welcome to all of our young adults, to all of the ministers of the gospel that are on here. I believe I see Pastor Jenkins. Welcome. Uh, praise God to everyone in Jesus' name. All right, let us go to the word. Let us go to the word. Um, we, uh, I like if we will go to our Bibles, we're going to look at 2 Chronicles, 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Uh, and for, for the, the context, we're going to talk about your fight is fixed. Now, due to timing, I am going to skip around a little, or I'm going to give you the abbreviated versions, because just for context, on a, on a Sunday, we would just take one or two uh, uh, scriptures or verses, and but for context, we have uh, chapters 14 through 28, so I would definitely be giving you the abbreviated versions, so we uh, won't have to go through all, but the word of the Lord says, then the spirit of the Lord uh, came upon Jehaziel, uh, the son of Zechariah, as he stood in the assembly. He is a Levite. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, this is what the Lord, the Lord said to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army, for the battle is not yours, but God." Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the gorge in the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Take up your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord that he will give you. Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow, and the Lord will be with you. Okay. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground, and all of the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worshiped before the Lord. Then the Levites stood there and praised God with a loud voice. Early in the morning, they left for the desert. All right. They said, listen to me, Ju Judah and the people of Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord, your God, and you will be upheld. Let's keep moving. After consulting with the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of the holiness, saying, give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. In another version, it says, praise ye the Lord for his mercy endures forever. All right. And as they began to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. Let's stop there. Father God, once again, we come and say thank you. Thank you for this preaching moment. Thank you for the opportunity. Remove me, increase you. Amen. There are times when we all go through major battles that heavily impact our lives. Some of you or someone may be facing a difficult circumstance right now. Someone on here tonight may have recently been 
confronted with a distressful situation. Someone may even be troubled because you don't know what the outcome will prove to be. But I have come tonight just as a simple source of encouragement because somebody needs a simple reminder that this battle is not yours, but it's the Lord. And because it's the Lord, guess what? Your fight is fixed. And when your fight is fixed, really all you have to do is show up and praise because your fight is fixed. So if I was to preach this entire message in a simple sentence, I would tell you, when you follow the instructions of God, your fight will be fixed. When you follow the instructions of God, your fight will be fixed. Imagine working really hard to reach a milestone uh, that you worked really hard to get there. You, you put in blood, sweat, and tears. And then all of a sudden, when you get to the end, some major roadblock presents itself and, and hinder your progress. See, that happened to me during the end of my graduate studies. Uh, the week of graduation, I was presented with a major challenge, being told that I would not graduate due to some unfair new policy. Again, this was three days before graduation and family, my family had already bought their plane tickets, they booked hotel rooms, they got rental cars, the whole nine. And after receiving this news, I spent many hours in tears, praying to God, trying to figure out who would I talk to about this situation, trying to strategize on what I would even say, and yet who would even care, especially at this extremely busy and important time of the year. Everybody know what graduation time is. <laughs> After finding the courage and the strength, I got up and said, I'm going to see the president of the institution. I was big and bad. I'm going to the president. However, as many of you know, that you would never just walk in anybody's president's office. So when I got there, I was sent to many different people's offices who was considered the lower level of the chain of command. And each person I met with ensured me that I would never get to see the president in such a short time. And they could not help me in the set decision would stand. I left the administrator's office feeling lower than I did even before I arrived. But as I was leaving, I was on the elevator. God allowed me to run into the president as he was standing right there once the door of the elevator opened. See, God favored me for the president to see me. And he remembered me and called me by my name. He said, Mr. Chaz Gibson, how is everything? Is everything all right? See, I told you a minute ago, when you follow the instructions of God, your fight will be fixed. This leads us into our text. See, our text revolves around King Jehoshaphat. And, and, and just to make them cool, we're going to call him King J in this context, okay? Our text revolves around King J, who was the fourth king of Judah. Now, King Jay was the fourth king that reigned for 25 years. Uh, the nation of Israel was broken into two kingdoms, the north and the south. King Jay was the king of Judah. Then you had Ahab, who was the king of Israel. Now, King Jehoshaphat, King Jay, led Judah in religious reform and focused on leading the people back to God. Well, during his time of his reign, see, news reached King Jay that, and that enemy forces were on the way to destroy Judah. Three distinct forces had come together to attack Judah. They were three different groups from three different locations. You had the Anamites, the Ammonites, who were from the land of Ammon. And then there were the Moabites from the land of Moab. Then you had the people of Mount Se from Mount Seir. They all came together in collaborative forces to bring down Judah. They were coming in massive numbers. And the Bible tells us that when King Jay received this news, he was greatly troubled and extremely distressed. See, no matter how close you get to God or how close you think you are to God, for a brief while, some news will disturb you. 
he began to seek the Lord at this time. Then he called all of the cities of the nation of Judah to fast and to pray. He told them that we are going to seek God's face for direction and instruction of what we must do to survive this threat, to survive this confrontation. Based on their leader's direction, all of Judah turned aside to fast and to pray. Just like we do, or I hope we do, when we are facing hardships and our own confrontations, we turn aside and we fast and we pray. The people of Judah became one, crying out on one accord for the Lord's help, for the Lord's guidance and deliverance. When the fast was over, King Jay and some of the people were sitting in the temple in the city of Jerusalem. And the scripture tells us that the spirit of God fell on a Levite by the name of Jehaziel saying to King Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah, do not be afraid. I know that the force that is coming against you seems overwhelming. He said, I know that the force causes you to be greatly outnumbered. He said, I know that those numbered against you are more than those numbered for you. But the spirit of God told Jehaziah to tell the people of Judah, do not be afraid and neither be dismayed for this battle is not yours, but this battle belongs to the Lord. But with courage and faith, just show up. Just show up, he says. He says, he will not, not make you fight this battle. You will not have to fight this battle because God has already worked things out. And under the aid of the spirit, Jehaziel continued to speak and God gave the plan. And he said, go out to the place to meet the enemy and you are going to do things uniquely different than you have done in other battles. When you go out towards the battlefield, do not go out depending on spears and swords and guns and brass knuckles, but go out singing praises to God. King Jehoshaphat said, the first thing we are going to do in preparation to meet the enemy, we are going to put our singers out front. That means we're going to put our praise in the forefront. We're going to be bold with our praise. God had also already given them the lyrics that they were singing. He simply told them just to say, praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. Just keep saying that over and over. Now notice as they're headed out, notice there had been no victory yet. Notice the enemy had not yet been destroyed. Notice this negative force that they were confronted with had not yet been wiped away, but they still entered the battlefield singing praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. They were marching to the wilderness. They were marching towards the enemy. They was marching towards the fight of their life and they're still saying, Praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. See, now that's what they did. Now, my question for you is, what would do you do when life brings you down and puts you against the wall? <laughs> what do you do when life brings you down and put you against the wall? Well, first you have to understand that life is inevitable. Life is inevitable. See, life be life. <laughs> life is inevitable. And it says right there in verse 15, it says, do not be afraid. That's what he told him. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. See, we learned earlier in the text that they were about to be attacked. See, King Jay and his people were not expecting this. See, they were not expecting this attack. This became one of life's unexpected and inevitable stressors. Now, as wise Christians, we must understand that unexpected and unfavorable and unwanted challenges at times will come. Whether we like it or not, it's inevitable. 
life's gonna come uh, and they will come. We cannot escape everything. We cannot escape every battle, but we also have to understand that sometime our better days will come as a result of our worst days. Sometimes it's important that we go through what we have to go through because we will get the victory on the other end and understand that God will not put you in a fight that he has not already planned the purpose attached, that he's going to give you the victory in the end. It does not matter what it is, and it doesn't matter what you have to go through, but you have to understand that your steps have already been ordered, even when you're scared, just like King Jay was scared, just like his people were scared, their steps were ordered, and if their steps was ordered, then my steps are ordered, and my steps are ordered, then your steps are ordered. But God takes us through these inevitable life challenges to strengthen our faith, and even though we're human, sometimes we want to cuss and scream and fuss, but we, while we are hoping for the best, and sometimes we have to prepare for the worst, uh, but we have to go in these fights, understanding that our fight is already fixed. The second thing we must do in all things, it's important that we must pray fast and seek wise counsel. Pray fast and seek wise counsel. See, King J bowed down. It says right there in verse 18, King J bowed down with his face to the ground and all of the people of Judah fell down and worshiped before the Lord. Fell down and worshiped before the Lord. Now, as I already stated, although the battle seems scary and hard, and sometimes our backs are against the wall, these obstacles we face, we have to understand that God's going to get his glory anyhow. He's going to get his glory regardless, one way or another. But sometimes we are placed in some situations that no one can help us but him. Sometimes things get so heavy, we must begin to fast and fall on our knees and we must pray. See, King J back was against the wall. He was in a dark place where he had no other choice but to fast and pray. See, fasting and praying changes things. Fasting and praying can change your situation. Fasting and praying is the necessary tools that you need to let God know that you got his message and he has your attention. See, watch this. He got your attention now. But it's also worth noting while we're here that this information that God delivered, it came from a Levite, meaning God can use anybody. See, we had to be careful how we treat other people or who we think are at a lower level than you or myself. That includes the secretaries. That includes the janitors. That includes the security guards because believe it or not, they got the keys and they get information before you get it. They know when you're going to be fired before you do because they're there. But we got to be careful how we're treating people. See, get, and also we got to seek wise counsel. Get you somebody that you can trust. Get you a prayer partner. We got to get an accountability partner and, and not look down on people based on, on they don't have the same status as us. And you cannot connect with everybody because everybody can't handle everything. But, it, it, but that also doesn't mean to go tell the world about your personal struggles. See, everything isn't for Facebook. Everything isn't for Twitter and TikTok or, or social media platforms. Seeking wise counsel is important because sometimes you need a trusted, like-minded loved one who can uplift you when you are down, who can push you when you need pushing, who can give you strength when you are weak, who can give you sound advice, but you must fast. Somebody that can fast with you and can pray with you. And the third thing, we must understand that there is power in praise. There is power in your praise. There is power in your praise. See, in verse 22, it says it right there. As they began to sing praise, they began to sing and praise. And the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. 
See, when the people of Judah got to the wilderness, the scripture says that God had already been there. <laughs> I love this. God had already been there. But while they were marching to their location, they were singing praises to God. The scripture tells us that God confused the enemy. God sent ambushes against the enemy and the enemy began to turn on each other. The enemy be, began to fight one another and they began to kill one another. See, the enemies took care of business and killed each other. And by the time King Jay and all his people arrived looking towards the watchtower, all their enemies were dead. They didn't have to swing a sword. They didn't have to get no guns. All of their enemies was already dead by the time they got there. And the Bible tells us they walked amongst the dead bodies and picked up all the silver and the gold and the precious rubies and the precious diamonds. And they had so much more than each man could carry. See what the devil meant for evil. God meant it for their good. And just like they departed Jerusalem, headed to the battlefield singing, praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. They left the battlefield, headed back home with that same praise, with that same worship, singing, praise ye the Lord for his mercy endureth forever. See, we got to be like King Jay and the people of Judah. See, we got to have the ability to praise God even when we get bad news. We got to be able to look at our problem, say, problem, I see you over there. But hallelujah, anyhow, just like King Jay, when he heard the news, he was down for a minute, but he got back up. So he heard from the Levite. He said, we began to put praise in the forefront. The people of Judah was bold with their praise and we have to be bold with our praise. And somebody said, I'm already bold with my praise, but we gotta be even bolder with their praise. See, they went to the battlefield saying, praise you the Lord for his mercy endures forever. See, understand if the Lord is putting you through it, it's to bring us to a deeper level of praise. It's to strengthen our faith. See, uh, I, I'm saying you, I'm saying me, I'm saying us, our, because I go through it too. You must enter a fight with the enemy. See, with the mindset and the thought pattern that I'm going to beat this joker one way or another. If I got to praise the Lord to beat him, that's what I'll do. If I got to fast to beat him, that's what I'll do. If I got to holler to beat him, if I got to cry, if I got to lift my hands, if I got to give him a dance, if I got to jump, run, scream, whatever it takes to win, because God will win, and because God win, I win, that's what I will do. Now, this ain't the first time for those that are going through something right now, those that are struggling right now, those that are in the midst of something, I don't know what it is, but hear me clearly, hear me clearly, this is not the first time you've been through something. This is not the first time you've been through something. You can't let the devil get you so worked up that you forget about where you've been. You can't let the devil get you so worked out. See, we can't forget about his track record and all of the other times that God has fixed your fight in the end and changed the outcome. See, here's my testimony, whether you believe it or not. I've been poor before. I've been broke before. I've been homeless before. I've worn the same clothes before. I didn't have money to wash my dirty undergarments before. My car been broke down before. I had to light candles just to see in my apartment before. I had to try to find some beanies and weenies before. But guess what? I'm still here because of the blessings of the Lord makes us rich. And every time I prayed, every time I praise every time I sought wise counsel every time he stepped right in and fixed my fight 
See, now we're talking about praise, I think. I think we're talking about praise right here. See, see, God loves it when we praise him. See, God loves it when we praise him. See, now, now I know, I know we can praise him on Sunday in the church house. I know that's not a problem. We can dance, we can shout, we can cry, we can worship, we can do all that. But, but watch this, praise is not just for Sundays, okay? Praise is universal and should be happening all all through the week, regardless of your physical location. Praise is boasting about God, celebrating God. When you can testify to someone, child, let me tell you what he did. Girl, he, he fixed it for me. I, man, let me tell you how he worked it out. See, praise is celebrating God's greatness and his goodness. And sometimes it's not even just about praise about something so special or, or unique that he did. Sometimes we must praise him for the things that we consider simple okay lord god i thank you for waking me up this morning god i just want to say thank you for having mercy on me even when i know i was doing wrong and you spared my life god i just want to say thank you for clean clothes god i thank you for clean water and fresh air to breathe god i thank you for eyes to see even though i might have glasses of contacts Lord God, I thank you for the use of the activities of my limbs. God, I thank you for the strength you gave me in my body. God, I thank you that nobody had to clothe me this morning. I was able to wash my own self this morning. Let the record reflect that right now I want to just praise you, God, and say thank you. Somebody put in the chat, thank you. Somebody put in the chat, thank you. Somebody type in the chat, thank you. Woo! Sometimes you just got to walk through your house. Sometimes you just got to walk through your apartment and say, look what God has done for me. Look what God has done for you. You might even got to walk through your efficiency. It, wh whatever God has blessed you with, you go to your place of employment, go to your property. You might walk around your desk and say, God, I don't have an office yet, but I got a desk. And if you gave me a desk, if you gave me a cubicle, you can give me an office. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my one bedroom because if you gave me this one bedroom apartment. I know that we're home ownership is on the way. God, I thank you for the little things so you can trust me with the big things. That's right. While in his presence, I need somebody to say thank you. What are you thankful for? 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 Father God, I thank you because I know I got more coming. I am not exactly where I want to be in my life right now, but I praise you that I'm not where I once was before. And I know I got more coming on the way. See, that's what happened. We're talking about praise. This is what happens when we praise. See, Lord, somebody needs to say, Lord, I thank you for my place of employment. I know I don't like my supervisor. They're getting on my nerves. And, uh, and I don't like some of these haters on my job and I don't make the full six figures I want, but I thank you. I even have a job. I know more is on the way. I need somebody just right now, right here. Just stop and praise God in the moment. Just stop and praise God for a moment. Just stop and praise God for a moment. Stop and praise God for a moment. Praise God for a moment. Praise God for a moment. Praise God for the moment. Praise God for the moment. Praise God for the moment. Praise God in this moment. Praise God in this moment like he's already turning it around. Hear this music. Hear the sound. Hear the sound. Praise God. Praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. Praise is what I do. I need somebody to lift your hands and just praise him. Lift your hands where you are and just say, thank you. Lift your hands where you are and say, thank you. I need you to praise God. Like he's already started turning it around for you. Praise God. Like your fight is already fixed. Praise God. Like your marriage is already fixed. Praise God, because he saved your children like he's already done it. Praise God as he ushers you into your next destination. Praise God for the doors he's opened for you. Praise God. 
that he washed your enemies away and made them leave you alone. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. See, watch this. Watch this. God will give you favor. How do I know? Because he did it for the King J and all the people of Judah. And watch this. He did it for me. Y'all remember, I told you about my college days when I was trying to graduate, but I didn't tell you the rest of the story. When I was standing at the elevator, the elevator opened. God fixed my fight. The president remembered me and called me by my name and asked me, was everything all right? That's what he did. He put me in the presence of the president at the elevator. And after a quick elevator speech, the president told me, don't worry, I'll handle it. And within hours, I received a call from the president's office saying, congratulations. We will see you at graduation. See, I prayed to God. I went forth to the meeting. And all I had to do was show up. And God changed the outcome. He fixed my fight. And this is what God did for me. And if he did it for me, he can do it for you. One phone call put me back on track. God had flipped the script. I laughed in the devil's face. Can you remember? Can you remember? what God's done for you. Can you remember when he stepped in and fixed your fight? Hmm. Amen. Remember, fixed your fight. Remember, if you remember when he fixed your fight, just take a moment and just say, Lord, I thank you for fixing my fight. Thank you for turning my situation around. Thank you, Lord, for changing the outcome. He did it for King Jehoshaphat. He did it for the people of Judah. He did it for Dr. Chas T. Gibson. I graduated and became a doctor. Yes, I did. And then he gave me more. You, you, you saw the, the, the people of Judah, they had so much gold and rubies, more than they, that they could even carry. Well, God has, from that moment, I graduated, then they gave me a scholarship to go get another degree. God, keep opening doors. And if he's done it for you, just remember, he can keep doing it for you. Because God can fix your fight. You can, just one more time, put in the chat. My fight is fixed. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for giving us clarity tonight that you are able, you are able to do the unexpected. Even when things seem hard, even when we don't know what the outcome of our situation is going to be, we struggle as young adults. We go through a lot. But you, in your word, has reminded us that all we have to do is pray to you, praise you, and show you. And we thank you. So whatever it is somebody needs, I ask that you give it to them. Whatever somebody's struggling with, we ask that you help them. Whatever somebody's worried about, we ask that you flip the script. Like you did it for me, like you did it for King Jehoshaphat. I ask that you do it for them. In Jesus' name. God bless.